today we're going to talk about a second property of the Laplace transform, which is going to enable us to transform piecewise functions. To that end, we are going to define a special piecewise function, which is called the unit step function. Use that unit step function, rewrite piecewise functions, and find the Laplace transform of piecewise functions. And then we're going to look at that process in the context of an initial value problem. So the unit step function, which is represented by a u, u for unit step, is the piecewise function that is defined by zero for all negative t values and is equal to one for all non-negative t values, t greater than or equal to zero. So it gets its name because it literally looks like you're taking a step the graph of the function is at zero all the way up to t equals zero, and then it takes a step up by one unit, and then it is equal to one for all positive t's. Now this function operates a little bit like a switch. Oftentimes when working with computers or electronics, the number zero is used to represent off and the number one is used to represent on. So the unit step function u of t is a function which turns on at time t equals zero. Now if you shift the unit step function and you turn it into u of t minus a, then this function will be zero all the way up until t reaches the number a, and then it will be one after that point. So the shifted unit step function, u of t minus a, can be thought of uh, as a switch that flips on at the time t equals a. We're gonna use that idea to rewrite a piecewise function using the unit step function. Let's rewrite the function f of t as a sum of function multiplied by unit step. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on t squared at time zero. So t squared multiplied by u of t. Then at time t equals two, I want to turn off t squared and turn on sine of t. So I'm gonna use a unit step function shifted two units to the right, and I'm going to multiply that by sine of t to turn it on, and minus t squared to turn that function off. Turn off t squared and turn on sine t at time t equals two. That's what this term is doing. Now finally, at t equals four, I would like to turn off the function sine of t and turn on the function three t plus one. So I'm gonna use a unit step function shifted four units and I'm going to use that switch to turn off sine t by subtracting sine t and turn on 3t plus one by including the positive version of that function. So this term in green is designed to turn off sine and turn on the portion 3t plus 1 at time t equals 4. This expression is equivalent to the piecewise function given here in bracket notation. It's just been rewritten slightly as a sum of function multiplied by unit step. Now the reason why we study how to rewrite a piecewise function using unit step functions is because we actually have a formula for the Laplace transform of the product 
of a function and a unit step function. If you're trying to find the Laplace transform of a function f of t multiplied by a unit step function which turns on at time t equals a, first find the Laplace transform of the function that you would get by shifting f by a units in the opposite direction. So be careful. We've got a minus a in the unit step function, and we have a plus a in the Laplace transform on the far right side. Then multiply the result by e to the negative a s. This is how we find the Laplace transform of a product of the form function times unit step. Now, as a special case, If we were being asked to find the Laplace transform of the product of a function and a unit step which turns on at time t equals zero, then this would correspond to the case when a was equal to nothing. So the formula would say that that's the same thing as the Laplace transform of f of t plus nothing multiplied by e to the zero. Since e to the zero is just one, this amounts to saying that if you take the Laplace transform of f of t multiplied by the unit step function that turns on at time zero, then that's equivalent to just taking the Laplace transform of the original function. So that special case can come in handy and save you some time. Now just as a heads up, this theorem does bear some similarity to the one that we introduced yesterday. Uh, yesterday we were taking the Laplace transform of an exponential multiplied by our original function. In yesterday's theorem, the variable on the exponential was t, because the exponential was being multiplied by something where the Laplace transform had not yet been applied. In this theorem, our exponential is in terms of the variable s, because the exponential in this theorem is being multiplied by something to which the Laplace transform has already been applied. So let's practice using this theorem to find the Laplace transform of the given piecewise function. And the first thing that I'm going to do is rewrite this function in terms of the unit step functions. So at time t equals zero, I'm gonna use the unit step to turn on the function t. And then at time t equals two, I'm going to flip a switch, which is going to turn off the function t, so I'll put in a minus t, and is going to turn on the function 0. So my function is equivalent to t times unit step minus t times the unit step which flips on at time 2. So I need to find the Laplace transform of these two terms. Now the first term is relatively straightforward. The first term, since we're taking the Laplace transform of t multiplied by a unit step that turns on at time zero, the special case that we looked at earlier says that's the same thing as the transform of just t, which by our table is equivalent to one over s squared. The more interesting problem is the Laplace transform of t times u of t minus two. The theorem says that what you need to do is take e to the power negative two s and multiply that by the transformation 
of the function which is obtained by replacing all of the t's with t plus 2. Why plus 2? So that it's the opposite of the t minus 2, which is inside of unit step. So the Laplace transform of t plus 2 is equal to 1 over s squared plus 2 over s. If I multiply that result by e to the negative 2s, then I get the Laplace transform of this product. So if I put those two results together, I can get the Laplace transform of my given function f of t. The piecewise function has been transformed into 1 over s squared, the transform of the first term, minus e to the negative 2s times 1 over s squared plus 2 over s, the transform of the second term. Now, as with most of these theorems, they are always sort of two-sided. Every statement about the Laplace transform carries a secondary hidden statement about the inverse Laplace transform. So I'm going to write down the statement about the inverse Laplace transform that comes from the theorem given here. And I'm going to write it in a formulation that I feel is going to be the most useful for you. I'm going to write it in the following way. The inverse Laplace transform of e to the negative a s times some function of s can be found by taking the unit step function of t minus a and multiplying it by the function lowercase f of t minus a, where f of t minus a can be obtained by shifting the inverse of the function f of s in the product. Let me show you what I mean here. So I have, the, I have a product of e to the negative 2s and 1 over s plus 4. The theorem tells me that the result of inverting that product will be equal to unit step function of t minus 2 multiplied by what you get by inverting the 1 over s plus 4 and replacing all the t's with t minus 2's. Now the inverse of 1 over s plus 4 is equal to e to the negative 4 times t. So I would replace the 4 I would replace the t with a t minus 2, and this function would be equal to the inverse Laplace transform of exponential times 1 over s plus 4. So, we have now used this theorem in two directions. unit step becomes an exponential you shift your function in opposite direction as unit step and then transform the shifted function But if you're using the theorem in the backward direction, the steps change quite considerably. In this case, we turn our exponential to unit step.
then then we inverse transform the function and then we shift the result in the same direction as our unit step. So not only is the actions, not only are the actions somehow opposite, but also the order is opposite. If you're using the transform in the forward direction to go from T to S, you shift first and then you transform. If you're using the theorem in the opposite direction, the first thing you do is transform, is do the inverse transform, and then you shift. Let's put this idea to work in another problem and an entire initial value problem, where what's unique is that the function on the right side of this initial value problem is piecewise. So I'm going to denote the Laplace transform of y by the letter capital Y, just because the function f of t is being used to represent not the solution, but just this function on the far right side of the differential equation. So with that notation, I'm going to apply the Laplace transform to both sides of my ODE. So the Laplace transform of y prime is equal to s times what I'm calling capital Y in this problem, minus the output at 0, plus capital Y is equal to the Laplace transform of the function on the far right side of the differential equation. Now in order to find the transform of the function on the far right side, the first thing that I need to do is I need to express the piecewise function f of t using the unit step. So I'm going to turn on the function 0 at time 0, and then at time t I'm going to flip the switch, which will turn off the function 0 and which will turn on the function 5. So after some simplification, the function f of t is equal to 5 multiplied by u of t minus 1. So if I take the transform of 5 times u of t minus 1, then I'll take e to the power negative 1 times s and multiply it by the Laplace transform of the function that I get by taking all of the t's in 5 and replacing them with t plus 1's. But of course, there are no t's in 5 at all, so that function remains unchanged, and I get the Laplace transform of 5, which is equal to 5 divided by s. So after reinserting that information into my differential equation, what I'm trying to solve is s times capital Y minus Y of 0 plus capital Y is equal to 5e to the negative s divided by s. Now I am told that Y of 0 is equal to 0. So this middle term vanishes, and I'm left with the quantity s plus 1 times y is equal to 5e to the negative s multiplied by 1 over s, and therefore the transform of my solution is equal to 5e to the negative s multiplied by 1 over s times s plus 1. So to stand any chance of being able to invert this expression, I'm going to go ahead and perform partial fraction decomposition on the rational function in the parentheses. So using the heavy side cover-up method, it looks like the coefficient in the numerator here is 1, 
and it looks like this coefficient is minus 1. So, I'm going to try and find the inverse Laplace transform of the product e to the negative s times 1 over s minus 5 inverse Laplace transform of e to the negative s times 1 over s plus 1. So now in this case, I need to use the theorem in the opposite direction. I'm taking the inverse Laplace transform of exponential times function. So what I need to do is start by taking the exponential and turning it into a unit shift. Then take the inverse Laplace transform of the function in the parentheses. And in the result, replace t with t minus 1. Likewise, for the second term, I'll have to multiply by the unit step, invert the function in the parentheses, and for the result, replace t with t minus 1. So the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s is just equal to the number 1. So there are no t's there that need to be shifted. The inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1 is equal to e to the minus t. So some t's there will need to be shifted. In the end, I get 5 times the unit step t minus 1 minus 5 e to the negative quantity t minus 1 times the unit step t minus 1. So you're free to leave it like that, or if you would like, you can do some factoring. And we can write this as 5 u of t minus 1 multiplied by the quantity 1 minus e to the negative t minus 1, for example. That concludes today's material. Today we talked about a theorem that allows us to do two things. One is it gives us a way to take the Laplace transform of a product of a function and a unit step function. This can be used in any situation where you're taking the transform of a piecewise function. Used in the reverse direction, we could also find the inverse Laplace transform of an exponential multiplied by a function.